Hello everybody, this is Chris Butler with Rusty Barn. We are so excited to announce that we are going back to live shows. Um, upcoming May 20th through the 22nd, we will be live in Boise, Idaho at Expo Idaho, which is the fairgrounds. And then following that, look at my calendar, June 17th through 19th, we will be in Oklahoma City. And that is at the Oklahoma City Fairgrounds in Oklahoma. Anyway, we are so excited to be coming back live to you. In the meantime, please keep supporting Wild Wednesday Live. We appreciate you, and we will see you in the mall. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Wild Wednesday Live. I'm Raylene Salazar from Coulter's Haven, and I'm going to be your host this week. And you know, as always at the beginning of the show, I tell you, we got to get through all the housekeeping stuff. So I want to go over a few things real quick before we get started with our first uh, demonstration today. Um, for those of you that are going to be attending the Boise show in May, um, Beth and I are going to do something a little bit fun. Um, and we're going to remind you of this every week up until time for the show. But uh, if you attend in person at the Boise show and you go to Beth's booth and my booth, and you want to be sure you go to both of them and you say, hey, I get wild with you on Wednesdays, we're going to have a special little gift for you. So be sure you do that. And again, we're going to keep reminding you about that until time for the show. Now, don't forget that all of our vendors today are offering super special discounts on the products that they're demonstrating, but those sales are only good through tomorrow night, Thursday at midnight. And you can always find our four vendors for today quick and easy when you go to the Quilt Craft Sew Mall. Just click on the link for Wild Wednesday and you'll find all four vendors. It will tell their discounts and you can click right directly through to their website so that you can order. Now, if you have any questions during the show for any of our vendors, please hold those till the end. We will be bringing everybody back at the end for a question and answer period. And unfortunately, if you type those questions in too early, we may not see them because I'm not monitoring for that during the show and we don't want anybody not to get their question answered. So again, do your best to hold those till the end. I know y'all get excited, so. And we do too. And remember, if you ever miss a live, you can always check out all the past episodes on our YouTube channel, Quilt Craft Sew Mall. And while you're there, be sure and click that subscribe button so you never, ever miss an episode. Now, we always like to also remind you that we are streaming live through the internet with the internet. And sometimes things happen. If you've been watching the news at all the last year where everybody is doing their programs remote, you know, sometimes things just happen and a guest will drop out. Well, it's the same situation with us here. Um, if it's ever such a bad connection that we don't feel like you're getting anything out of their demo, we will stop them and have them re-log into the system and see if that clears it up. And if it doesn't, then we will just uh, reschedule them at a later date because we want everybody to get the most from our experience. All right, continuing on with what we've been doing since the beginning, we are going to be giving away five terrific door prizes today. Now, for those of you that are new with us, the way this is going to work is later on in the show, I am going to give you a secret phrase. And once you know the phrase, you will just type that in the comments and that will enter you into the drawing. Now, we ask that you please only type it in one time so that we don't have to sort out all the duplicates. Now, normally I tell you guys to check back in an hour or so after the show. However, today, right after the show, I have to make it to an appointment. So I'm not going to have the winners posted till later tonight, but you will just come right back on this Facebook page, Quilt Craft Sew Facebook page, and there will be a post and it'll say winners. There's a real bright banner that I use that says winners so that you can find who won and it will tell you what to do to claim your prize. So again, I'll be giving you that secret phrase later on in the show. But here's the great prizes that we have today. And one of our regulars on the show, the Big Matt Rotary Cutting Surface is not on today, but she wanted to give a prize. So she's given a really good prize. I'm like, oh yeah, sure. Like I'm gonna tell her no. Um, she is donating a 24 by 48 mat to be given away today, one of her wonderful cutting mats. Um, Beyond Interiors is giving away a three pack of uh, Laurel Birch socks, which are so adorable. Um, Cropper Designs is gonna be giving away a Christmas stocking kit. And uh, Chanillet is going to be giving a $25 gift certificate for her business. And Feral Country Stitching is going to give adorable four-piece dinosaur template set. So, again, just listen for the phrase later in the show. Okay, well, I think we're about ready to get started. Um, first up today, 
we have Julie and Leanne from Beyond Interiors. And uh, Julie's actually going to be doing the demonstration today. So hi, Julie. How are you? Hi, fine. It's glad to, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having us. We are so excited to have you. And I'm just going to turn it over to you so you can get going and show us what you have. So take it away. Thank you so much. Um, our business is Beyond Interiors. We are located in Oakland, California. My business partner, Leanne Scott, and I have been best friends for 30 plus years and business partners for maybe about 25 years. Today, I kind of wanted to share with you my obsession with all things glass. One of the things that we love selling in our store um, virtual store or, you know, quilt store when we are at shows are uh, necklaces that are um, made by made by me. I don't make the beads, but they are hand blown um, Venetian glass from Murano, Italy. We have a wholesaler that we've just become the best of friends with in uh, the Bay Area that we get the beads from. We go down, we hand pick the beads. And then the same thing, we have a wonderful artist in um, the Bay Area who makes these unique lamp work beads. Lamp work are a hand blown glass bead. In this case with, with this woman, she, she starts out with a circular bead and then just kind of squishes it just a little bit in uh, all different varieties of colors. And then she swirls a circle around it. They're very unique. And they're just so cute. I call them the alien, the alien beads. So we call this our alien spaceship necklace, which is what I'm wearing. Um, there are many, many different choices. Um, we, I've started out, I started out, it was of interest to me to choose a huge variety of beads. So I don't, I don't know if you can see this, but the importance, oh, I can never tip things correctly. The importance of the beads is, is pretty paramount. You want to have a good size bead in between your chosen specialty beads. You want to have a good color. You want to have a good size and you want to have different shapes. And that's what I try to do with these necklaces. I don't know if you can see it really easily, but there are many different shapes, many different sizes, and that's what we do to make things unique. Each necklace is basically um, a different, it's a one of a kind because you just always use this other beads. We do have necklaces that are um, a monochromatic per se, such as this. This is a Venetian. This is this beautiful Venetian glass that's um, just so sparkly and so special. These are the uh, Swarovski crystal beads. This is two. We have seed beads and uh, made from Czech and Japanese glass beads. And then the spacer makes it so that it is um, distinctive each time you wear it. This particular necklace, I don't know if I can send it back. Whoops, sorry, the wrong way, is an off-center necklace. So there's a large, beautiful heart on this side and then two matching um, cylinders on, on this side. And I just make what I think is attractive. It just seems to work. We have shapes. This is a pillow, basically, or a diamond, a pair a diamond shape that this is Murano glass that's been that's been fashioned in uh, Murano, Italy. Here's another. Well, darn it. <laughs> there we go. Um, that's a mono. Uh, it's a actual a double. It's a purple and a gold color that are in swirls. Um, most of my necklaces are a dropped choker. It's much more comfortable, especially for. People are aged these days, and um, the 15%, uh, we are offering a 15% discount uh, for the show on all of our necklaces, as well as what we call our fun stuff. So um, basically, if I can show you, each necklace is different. It is a different, well, a different pattern that um, highlights the necklaces that we that we like. Here's an example in a black and white that really looks pretty in uh, 
in many things. These necklaces are styled so that you, they look peculiarly good with everything. I'm wearing something very plain, so it pops out. But my business partner, Leanne, is wearing a patterned shirt and it blends in and looks wonderful there. So these necklaces are so versatile. I mean, I admit I'm prejudiced, but I wear them, you know, three or four days a week because they really tend to go with everything. I don't know if you can see, but the earrings can be matching, which is the obvious picture, or what I consider, I call it oddball because one, you can have a choice of colors. You can have one blue and like in this instance, one, one green. Um, I have a few instances in which I've made earrings that I call yin and yang. So it's, it's turquoise blue on dark blue and dark blue on turquoise blue. So there's just a variety of colors. I became really interested in colors and shapes in college. And while I didn't major in art, I just, I've always had a real interest in it. And if you look, the what I consider the eight colors are red, yellow, blue, green, purple, orange, but also pink and um, turquoise. And there are many other variations I've, I've gotten so that I have hundreds of beads that I've collected through the years. And that's what's really had a, I've had a lot of fun um, and shown, you know, just really enjoyed making all these necklaces because they're, they're all unique and all very interesting. Anyway, we have this, this is also a Venetian glass. It's hard to see. It looks like it's clear glass, but it's not. It's got these beautiful um, uh, turquoise and pink kind of flecks of color, which is um, patterned in the beads that are, that are chosen to go with it. This one is one of my favorites. It's the obvious blue and green. Uh, well, you know, I'll get this by the end of the century. It's a blue and green pattern with the beautiful, um, beautiful stylized square beads. And then this is another, what I call alien. That's a lot, that's, these are a lot of fun. And like I said, they're all, all very interesting, very unique. Um, we have other sets of jewelry that I do not make, but they're called Firefly. They are in a very interesting, using crystal, Austrian crystal beads that are combined with semi-precious stones. They, well, here we go. This is what happens when you're left-handed. There we go. Close to the um, they are made hand by hand in Guatemala from a company that is um, centered in Oakland, which is where we are. So we are happy to highlight these, these interesting, um, they're beautiful pieces. They're, like I said, they're, they're uh, crystal, which is our, great love and um, obviously matching earrings that are a lot of fun. So there are just many, many choices. Some of the things that we do are handmade. I also make, we sell a lot of Aboriginal fabric and Japanese anime fabric. So this is an, a runner and it is, if you have a two yard piece of fabric, so you need two yards of fabric, two different choices um, to, you know, blend and go together. But it will make eight 18-inch um, square napkins. And then the runner, I can explain to the pattern if you want to make the pattern. Um, if you want to use, use my measurements, I can explain to you later that the pattern of the leftover fabric from the um, napkins will make a 72 inch runner. And they're just really lovely. The Aboriginal patterns are so interesting. They're, they're just fabulous to, to look at. Here's a, here's one that, that incorporates um, uh, kangaroos. Here's a, um, a shell a shell pattern. And this is just kind of an interesting, they all have a story. All these fabrics that are Aboriginal have a story. This circled, 
circled patterns. Um, but all of these patterns have an interesting story. So we have the uh, napkins and the um, table runners we have already um, made that you can purchase or you can buy the fabric and you can make it yourself. It depends on what, you know, what your choice and what your interest is. Um, other time, other fun stuff. I can't see it. 15. Oh, yes. oh so, okay. So kind of wrap up. Okay. Just, just wrap up. So we bit. also do Laura Birch socks and we have Quilting Girl socks. I'm sorry that we've already taken up so much of your time, but we love all of our, all of our fun choices. Our motto basically is Mo Kala, Mo Betta. And I hope you've made good time, good choices, um, having excessive downtime. And the code for our 15% uh, off is B-E-Y-I-N-T-15, Beyond Interiors 15. Thank you so much. Take care. And I hope that you're well and things are going better these days. Thank you, Julie. That was so awesome. That The jewelry is just beautiful. I don't know how I've never seen it before, but you know, we always laugh that we're all so busy. We never see what the other vendors have had. And yeah. so for Beth and I doing the show all these months, we're like going, oh, so that's what they sell. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's been fun. I'm afraid I've spent a little more money than I should during this time, but we do appreciate that. And I hope that you can stick around until the end for question and answers. Oh, sure. And just to remind everyone, the way you're going to find their website quickly is by going to the Quilt Craft Soul Mall and click on the Wild Wednesday link, and you're going to find them right there quick and easy. All right. Well, next up, let's see who we got up today. Our next vendor is actually our first time with us. We're going to be bringing in Barbara from Crawford Designs, and I'm excited for her today because we laugh because we're not even quite to summer yet, but now is the time to start doing your Christmas gift. And, you know, here in Arizona where it's, you know, 95, 100 degrees every day, sometimes it's kind of hard to get into it. So I'm looking for some inspiration today. So hi, Barbara. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. How are you? We're good. We're good. We're very anxious to turn it over to you. So go ahead and take it away. All right. Thank you. Hi, I'm Barbara. Nice to be here. I'm in Katy, Texas. A Crawford Designs uh, Sewing Made Simple Patterns. We've been around 25 years now. If you're looking for my sewing room behind me, you won't find one. I'm the dining room table sewer, and I always have been for the last 25 years. So let's get started. I use wool felt. That's a bl blend of wool and rayon. You can tell I only have 15 minutes. Okay, it comes in on the bolts. I know that you've seen this at some of the stores. It doesn't look that good when, you, when it comes in as flat, shiny, and not that good. But after it's felted in the washers, it becomes, I don't know if you can see it as well, but you can see it thickens up and texturizes. And that's really what you're seeing when you're looking at the stocking. See all my babies? You're seeing the fabric stand off of the background stocking. And, and that makes it washable. That makes your stockings washable now, that first time around. So I've got a lot of designs. I know you can see the ones behind me, but I put some here so you can see. These are newest ones. Whims uh, Winter Whimsy, number 273, and Snowballs. Isn't that cute? Snowballs being the more simple one. So they can be simple. They can be a little more technical. But everything that you're seeing is only four stitches, four embroidery stitches that I'm going to show you today. I've got my camera set up. So we're looking at blanket stitch, small stitch, French knots, and starburst. That's all I use. It just looks like a lot, but it actually isn't. Aren't they sweet? Oh, what else we got? Two more. I'm proud to say that our stockings are now literally all over the world. Our patterns you can find in almost every country. Isn't it pretty? And the colors that you put together, they all go together. It's not, it's uh, hard not to match them up. They all just look good together. There we go. This is my trunk show. Isn't it sweet? Tangled lights. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's three snowmen. Boy, it's just opposite on here, isn't it? There's three snowmen in there. The baby. The mama and the papa. 
Isn't that sweet? So all you're seeing is a layering of wool felt. Yeah, it's a lot of hand stitching, and I want to show you an easy way to get that done. So I want to show you. Very simple, but cute. Da -da -da. I've never had anybody accuse me of having a lack of words, but I'm a little bit nervous on the camera. Okay. And for the male figure in the house, we have two. We have Anirondack with the moose, and then we have the deer. Okay. Like I said, some look busier than others. Some do take a little more time, but you can make it uh, less busy. See my another papa figure this is the blue santa this is the original blue santa that came out 25 years ago almost still the most popular stocking design we have if you add to him okay so we did a secondary one i'll go this way now i know what she was talking about i added in more snowflakes here i doubled the snowflakes and then i put in lights i don't know if you could see those lights come on but he's got lights all through the snowflakes. We have another one that kind of go together. I think they kind of sell together. And she has lights too. So you put in a little built-in pocket to hold your battery pack. And they just light up. Isn't that sweet? Cute, cute, cute. They all come in kits. Like that. Okay. And we've already had orders started to come in. So... They all come in kits. All the wool felt is felted for you. You've got your full covered pattern. You don't want to make a stocking, so what? You've got your fabric here. You've got an applique pattern right here. Put it on anything. Aren't they cute? Pillows, makeup, matching pillows to go with your stockings. You can do just about anything. Nice. I use pearl cotton. That gives me... I know I shouldn't do that. Pearl cotton, and that's all on the back of the patterns. It tells you the number the color and what size gauge that thread is you're only using a single strand of it because it's thick enough that it stands right off of it you can see it really well oh i'm pointing it but you're not seeing it okay it stands right off of the fabric that pearl cotton and i like it better than the embroidery thread uh, i don't have anything i won't say i don't have anything against embroidery thread i have a hard time pulling it apart if there's anybody else out there like me Go with pearl cotton. It's just as accessible and you don't have to pull the strands apart. So now your stockings are washable. I felt them for you because every color has to be felted separately. And I can't ask you to do that. You would never buy another stocking kit. You'd never, buy, you'd ne you'd never do it. Better let me do it. Now your, your stuff is machine washable. It comes to you ready to go. Okay. You can see everything I have. See how everything stands off? It's just dimensional, and that's what you're seeing when you walk by or when you're looking at the thing. Anything can be added in with snowflakes and put in lights. Um, they're so cute. They're fun to make. And with the summer coming, and it looks like people are traveling finally. Yay! We're coming out of the lockdown. So this is a good thing to carry in the car. I'm going to come around this way. Uh, carry in the car with you or if you're just sitting watching TV and there's something to do unless you want to put that sewing machine in your lap uh, this is an easy way to do it it's not to say you can't make these stockings on a machine you can but like I said if it's something that you're just sitting there and relaxing and just I have to keep my hands busy the only actual sewing machine part on any of the stockings is putting the back to the front okay once you do that and you turn it right side out, you'll see that there's, um, on the edging, it's all poofed out. It won't lay flat. And that's where your blanket stitch comes in. And you're blanket stitching right along the edge, but only catching, see the back doesn't have it. It's only catching that front. And it makes it, it tames it basically and lays down nice and flat. And then you uh, blanket stitching around the top. That is the only blanket stitching in the, these stockings, the perimeters, mainly because the pieces are small. So let's go, um, I need to go over to the other camera, Ron. There you go. <laughs> How professional is that? <laughs> okay. 
Except for I don't see anything but a black screen, so I'm hoping that you can see me. Can you, Raylan? Hey, Barbara, we lost, we lost your second camera. Okay, let me look. Uh, see, it says you're in the show. Mm -hmm. There it is. Hang on. Okay, got it. I haven't touched it since we tested it. I knew that would. Yeah, be it, we've just got a blank screen on the second camera. Darn it. And I don't think I don't know if you can see me. And let's try it on the big screen then. Oh yeah, we'll just roll with it. <laughs> and my grandson's not in here, so he's my camera guy. So when you're putting in on your applique on the stockings, when you have this detail inside, like the scarves or the coats, you know, I never have anything right here. Okay. Let's look at snowballs. He's got a nice striped scarf somewhere in this room. There we go. Those are all little strips of white wool felt. So if you're traveling or you know you're going to travel and you want to get it ready, this is what I use. I use a glue stick. I get all my applique pieces down in my little circle here. Dab a little glue on it. it any glue stick will do. It doesn't stiffen it or anything. Then you just put it, that dot where you want it to hold it in place. And then when you're gone, you don't have to, when you're just working, you just grab your pieces and do your small work. You don't need pins or anything. And you're not losing them all over the car. All these things have happened to me. So this is how I've come up with the glue stick. I didn't invent it, but I could say that, but people would know I was wrong. I didn't. So same way to add in the uh, stripes. Woo! There we go. For scarves, anything small you're going to do. Even your little birds. I've got one pattern there that has birds in it that has a double body. So now I would glue this on with this glue stick so I can work. It doesn't stiffen it where your needle can't go through. Your needle can still go through, no problem. If you do run into that because your pearl cotton is a little bit thicker, hemostats or the little rubber fingers to get a good grip on it. But I really haven't had a problem. Let's, let's take a look at I'm doing this on a, with a black thread so you can see it. I can't believe all, all this preparation and I can't get that camera going. Uh, all right. The blanket stitch. I don't know if we can if you can see this or not, especially since I can't see what direction I'm going in. Raylene, I don't know if we can get this up there. Mm, there. Yeah, we, we can see it pretty good. If you just skip your camera down a little bit more, maybe. Okay. There you go. That's perfect. It's actually a white piece of fabric on my screen now looks purple. All right. <laughs> so we're going to come up from underneath about a quarter of an inch from the raw edge. This is the blanket stitch. I know almost everybody knows it, but there's somebody out there that doesn't. All right. I've knotted my thread and I've, come, I've made my thread too long. Okay. Now I'm going to grab the little edge of the white and a little bit of the under. Barbara? Thread. Yes. Hey, Barbara, pull, pull what you're working on back towards you. There you go. Perfect. I see it now. Okay. So we're going to, you see what I did? I grabbed this edge and now I've got my thread up here. Then you're going to go separate to the next one. Do exactly the same thing and hold your thread back with your thumb. Okay. Pull it up. Bam. Then we go to the next one. Until you get the hang of it, it does look a little folk art. And then it gets where you can't get it to look like folk art if you, to save your life. So when you get better at it. But it's that simple. That's your blanket stitch. We're going to come down to the edge, okay, because that's a big question, that pointed corner. All right. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see it. Uh, all right. I have a little carpal tunnel going on in both hands, so that's what those gloves are. Okay. Let's get to the corner. I should have started in the middle. Get over there. All right. All right, so we're in the corner. 
you're going to come at an angle here, pull it up and grab the little corner edge of that white piece of little square, okay? Keep your thread hold, held back. Hmm. Like, try not to use such a long th thread. Make sure it's all straightened out. And I always go down in that tip. Okay. So that you have a nice pointed edge there. Then you can come back in right where you left off down here with your needle. Okay, and then you're ready to keep going down to the next corner. All right. Then just come back. When you're done, come back down underneath and knot off. There we go. I moved it, didn't I? Knot it off. Mm -hmm. Tell Stephen that my camera's not working. I'm going to do it on here. Maybe he can fix it. Okay. Scissors. I don't generally use black thread much, but I thought maybe you could see it e uh, better. Okay. On the small stitching, everything around that you see on there, the snowman, the cuffs, the mittens, everything is done with a small stitch. So you're coming in about a, a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch from that edge. Just depends on how you like it. It's probably more of an eighth. Okay. You're coming up, going straight across and going back down. See how I'm going straight here? Okay. And then I'm going to come up next to it over here. It depends on how far you want your stitches apart. I'll leave that to you. But that is, that's just the small stitch that's holding it. It does, if you get them nice and even, it does look like it was a blanket stitch. It just isn't. This is faster anyway. And it looks good. See how thick this fabric is once it's uh, felted? I absolutely love it. You're going to wash it in cold water, your stocking. I would wash it by hand. I'm going to knot off. Okay. And I would hang dry it. Once it's dried, you can fluff it up in the dryer if you want to. Or you can spot clean it till you absolutely have to wash it. You're putting the work in on the stitches so you don't want to just run it through the washer. That's my opinion. Okay. I don't know why I have this color out here. This is the color, you probably can't see it, but it's number 434 or 435. And that's the color I use on everything on that stocking for the applique. Then I come in with the white, and here we go. Dark piece of fabric. French knot. They're all over as the snowdrops and for the eyes on the snowman and buttons and smiles. So you come up from underneath there, you've got a knot in there. It really is smart not to have your thread this long. Okay. So you're going to lay, let's see if I can see my hands. You're going to lay your needle close to where you came in, and you're going to start wrapping it. One, two, three. I've got four wraps, actually. I'm holding it on. That's, that's generally the biggest I go. And you go back in where you came up, right next to where you came in, and pull it. Ah, oh, you know I knew that was going to happen. There we go. Pull it nice and easy. And you've got yourself a little French knot. Let's try that again. It's kind of like working in a mirror. So, get it over there. Here we go. So we're going to put the needle down here. One, let's, I'm doing a big one because you can see it. One, two, three, four. Let's do five. Five. I'm going to go, I mean, right next to the hole that I came in on. Okay. And it makes the nice little knots that you see so to make them various sizes it's how you wrap that needle wrap it once you've got a tiny snowdrop wrap it four times you've got a large one two or three times you've got different variations in there and it shows it may uh it really does show so that's how you make your french knots and then you just knot it off in the back all right what was the other one starburst 
I'm going to show you with Starburst and one more. I'm, I keep looking at the clock, but I don't even really know what time I started. I still want Raylene to pull that hook and pull me off the video. Here we go. So I'm trying to show you everything. <laughs> we got time for those last two switches. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I keep looking over my shoulder for that hook. <laughs> so you're going to start here. Just come up anywhere you want to put the starburst. Come on up. Okay. Then do a straight line down. Okay. It's really, when you see this, you're going to think, oh my gosh, and they pay her to do this? Now look. Now you're going to come over here and make a, you're making a plus sign. All right. So there's your little uh, X or plus sign or whatever you want to call it. So now go in between there. Make it long, make it short. Kind of give it a little bit of a design. I shortened it a little bit. And I'll make a shorter one over here. I can try to make them a little even. Look at that. It almost looks like a machine did it. Okay. All right. I know you can't see my face, can you? I'm just laughing at myself. Here we go. And that's... Dang it. Okay. All right. And that's your starburst. Easy peasy. Sometimes we just make things harder than they have to be in our heads. And then you get to it and you're thinking, wow, okay. I can do this. There is one more stitch, if we have time. That I said there was only four, and there is most of the time. But Santa, look at his. God, this is really, really easy. Okay. It's the Lazy Daisy stitch. And I know everybody's heard of Lazy Daisy, but. So what you do is you start with a stem stitch. Or just a running stitch. Not a stem stitch. I'm sorry. I'll just do two so we can get to that Lazy Daisy stitch. So while I'm doing this and you're watching, our, I have put our stocking kits on sale for 20% off. And even better than that, well, not better than that, because that's pretty good. I will pay for half the shipping. So I've got the shipping up there for $3.95. All right, so now I've come back up. I've got this stitch done here. Let's call this point A. I'm up in point A. I'm going to hold the thread back with my thumb, and I'm going to hold it over here in point C. I'm going to come back with my needle and go right next to, you know, I'm, I could do this in my sleep, right next to point A, and I'm going down I'm to point B, and I'm going through, okay? And I'm still holding. Maybe I didn't do it right. And I'm coming up to point C. Da, da, da. All right. And then I'm going down over that thread to hold it down, to tack it down. I'm making a little tack stitch, and that's point D, and that's your final point. Okay? And you now have a leaf. A lazy daisy stitch leaf. A, B, C, D. You just hold that thread back while you're working. You can make them any size you need to. It's really not, that's something you can practice on. Let's do it real fast. Point A. It doesn't do me any good if you don't know what you're doing. Then it makes you intimidated and I don't want that to happen. I'm holding the thread back and coming down to point B. I'm sticking it in, but actually I'm just going to loop it up here and come out to point C. Look at that. Now I've just made that easier. You've actually just taken a stitch. And then you're going to do a tack stitch down over the thread, and that's point D. All these stitches are in the pattern. You have a chart in there. These, this video will give you a reminder of what you're seeing. Okay? But that's really all you have. The blanket stitch the small stitch, the French knot, the starburst, and only on this one pattern you have this lazy daisy stitch, but you can put it in any way you want to. You need the French knots for the eyes for the snowman, for their smiles, for their buttons, if you, unless you want to put in real buttons. There I am.
Okay. <laughs> but see how easy that is if you have it already stuck on <laughs> That was great. <laughs> You're traveling. You I know don't what? have a coupon. I do have a link that Raylene will give you, and you can find me. And uh, I've already started putting kits together and getting ready. So, Barbara, that was terrific. Thank you. I, I love the tip about the glue stick. That makes such perfect sense to hold yeah. everything so you can carry it with you easily. And it doesn't have to be a fabric glue stick. It can be just any glue stick. Not the purple one. Just yeah. Because I'm working with white, but yeah, right. it's a lot, it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to put it all over; it. just tack it on there and then put it down. And then you're ready to rock and roll. Well, we hope you'll stick with us till the end because we did have some questions pop up. So we'll be back at the end with those. And guys, remember that's 20% off. You don't need a special code, and she's going to pay half the shipping. So what a deal! And I tell you, her kits are amazing. You get everything. Like she said, she's got the stitches in there. And this is the perfect time to start thinking about everybody getting new stockings. It is. Okay? It is. So thanks, Barbara. We'll see you in just a few minutes. Bye, guys. Okay. It's that time. It's contest time. I know you guys love contest time. Um, as a reminder, once I give you the secret phrase, you're just going to type it into the comment section. Please only do that once so that we don't have to filter all the extras out. And if you're new to us, the way this works, once again, is um, sometime later tonight. Normally, it's right away, but I have an appointment right after the show today. So later tonight, I will post on this Facebook page, the Quilt Craft Sewing Festival Facebook page, where you're watching the show from. I will post the winners with the instructions on how to claim your prize. So, okay, I know you guys got your uh, contest fingers ready. So the secret phrase this week is live shows live shows that's all you have to type in the comments and that enters you in the contest <laughs> okay and as a reminder you will have until midnight friday night to claim your prize all right well we have another uh, vendor that's new to our show this week that we're so excited to have on and uh, that is nanette from chenille are you there nanette i am i'm happy there she is we are so excited to have you. So I am not going to waste any time with my chit chat and just turn it right over to you. So take it away. Thank you. It's so exciting to be back with all of you again. We miss the shows, the live shows, and uh, but we love being on Facebook Live. For those of you that aren't familiar with our product, it's Chenille at Blooming Bias. And if you have done the layered and the stitched and the washed, Chenille, forget all of that because this that, that's not what this is about. This chenille comes on a roll. This looks like this. It's a very simple product. Comes in two different widths, a 3 8 inch width and a 5 8 inch width. I'll be talking about both widths today and 23 different colors. So one of the new things that we're doing since we have been at the shows, uh, we now have a chenille at the box, which is a subscription box that ships monthly you sign up for a subscription and you get over 65 dollars worth of product um, you get fabrics you get chenille it um, some little goodies and notions that are thrown in there for just 49 dollars which is a discounted price the value of the box is over 65. so and it also gives you a chance to learn the techniques Learn the fun things you can do with Chenille with new projects. Each month we have a guest designer, a guest um, fabric designer. We feature their fabrics. We feature uh, different colors of Chenille and always has a new project in each one of the boxes. So we'll talk about a couple of those today. The first box was in February. And if any of you have been quilting for a long time, one of the things you may have done over the years was hexagons. And hexagons is traditionally a very labor intensive technique where it's done with paper piecing and you cut out the hexagons and they have to be all hand stitched and hand sewn together. Um, we have a full size quilt pattern called hexagon, G-O-N-E, that comes in that um, subscription box as well as uh, the project of that month was the hexagon pillow. And I'm going to show you just really quickly how easy that is. So instead of doing individual hexagons, I have a raw edge applique 
that is cut the shape of the grandmother's garden. So I don't have all those individual hexagons. Now I just have one hexagon in the middle. And that's just stitched down. You're just going to stitch that raw edge applique. I hope you can see with a close up of the camera that you just stitch close to that edge all the way around the raw edge applique. And then you simply take the 3 8 We're going to use the 3 8 chenille to finish that raw edge. And you just lay that down over the raw edge and stitch down the center of the tape. That's all there is to it. And when you come, there's no right or wrong side to the product, to the tape. When you get to a corner, all you do is flip it and keep going. So you can see, you can see here where we've stitched it all the way around that raw edge applique. And then we take another little piece of chenille and that's what's creating the shape of the hexagon. So this pillow looks like we've done hexagons, but we didn't have to do them. So it's a lot faster and a lot easier. The other technique that you learn in that um, subscription box was finishing the edges with chenille instead of binding. So for a pillow, instead of sewing your pillow together with the right sides and turning, you don't have to turn your pillow. You simply put the, the back and the front together, serge the edge, to finish it off. And then I stitch a double layer of the 5 8 inch chenille to the front and to the back. And when I wash it, that edge is all finished. I didn't have to bind it. And it gives me this soft textured um, edge. Texture is really hot in home deck right now. You're gonna see it everywhere on pillows, on duvets, on everything. And you can stitch the chenille. I stitch up the jacket I have on has chenille it on it. So you can stitch it on clothing, you can stitch it on quilts, pillows, everything. Um, then another thing that's really probably my favorite thing to do with chenille it is to turn a panel into a fabulous work of art. The quilt that you can see behind me, hopefully you can see the detail on this. This is called We Can Fly. This is Peter Pan. The original quilt that I did of the, of P, for Peter Pan was designed by my daughter, Erin Dahl, and it was all raw edge applique because I wanted to show what the possibilities were with chenille. And everybody loved it. Everybody wanted the pattern. There were way too many pieces. So instead of having to do all those raw edge appliques, now this quilt comes as a panel I'll open this up so you can see. And this is this is from Hoffman Fabrics. And so now this is a panel. All those houses, all the clouds, Peter Pan and Wendy and the ship are all printed on the panel. And all you have to do is sew the chenille on it. So I like to say that it's just it's like paint by number <laughs> with chenille. And the, it's designed for the chenille. So you can see all the lines on this panel where you're going to lay the chenille it down. And all you do is lay that down, stitch down the center of the tape. And when the quilt's completely finished, layered and quilted, throw it in the washer and dryer. And you, that's your final result with that quilt in the back. You have all that wonderful texture. And the chenille makes all those appliques and the houses and the clock tower all just pop. So it's for, for panels, it's just absolutely fabulous. You can take any panel and do that. Um, the panel that just shipped in our April box is um, our guest designer was Create Joy Project from Moda Fabrics. Lara designed, um, she has a wonderful fabric collection. You get fat quarters from her fa fabric collection as well as the chenille and her Moody Bloom panel, which is this flower panel that has been texturized with chenille. And all the chenille comes in the kit with the panel, the binding, everything you need to make that fabulous quilt. And it just makes those flowers come alive and makes them bloom. Another quilt where we've used the raw edge applique technique is the Venetian window. And this is probably our most popular um, quilt if you've been to any of the shows in the past before all of this happened. We always featured this quilt in our booth. It's the Venetian windows. 
This is another raw edge applique, and you can see just on this simple block um, that the applique, again, is just stitched close to the raw edge, and then those raw edges are covered, again, with the 3 8 bias. And when you, when you wash it and dry it, you get the wonderful texture of that quilt. And you can see that instead of just being, instead of just being an applique, now that applique just really pops out of the quilt and you see the fabrics more, you see the design of the applique more because the chenille just really emphasizes it and, and gives you a wonderful texture. You can do so many, I, I'm going to show you just a couple of really quick projects too. You know, in each each month we are going in the subscription box. There will be a different guest designer. There will be a different next um, uh, coming up in May is Art Gallery Fabrics Sharon Holland, um, her new fabric collection. So there's going to be some, and she's designing a special project for the box. So you want to be sure and sign up for the subscription box and and have something new and exciting every month. This is a fun. Another fun pillow that's done with raw edge applique and everything again is just finished with the chenille. We can't make it any easier. One of the most popular things that quilters are doing right now with the chenille is finishing the edges of quilts with the 5 8 bias instead of binding the same way we did on the pillow. But look at the edge, edge that you get on a quilt when you finish that with chenille instead of binding. And we're looking for, I hope you have, if you have questions, if you can't remember these fast, we've gone through these techniques pretty quickly, but we have, we have a YouTube channel. Um, you can go on YouTube and see the different techniques and see them step by step. This quilt is really kind of a fun Another thing that's been very popular in quilting is rag quilts. And instead of doing rag quilts where you have to layer all those fabrics and do all that cutting, and then you have a mess in your washer because all those, when you're cutting straight of grain, all those threads, you have nowhere to go but in your washing machine. And it's a really heavy quilt. So instead of doing a rag quilt, this is my version of a rag quilt. And I only have, I just piece my blocks together this is a single layer of the 5 8 inch bias sewn over the seams. So I don't have any cutting. I don't have any mess. When this, when this is washed, you're not going to have a mess. This is perfect bias. When you stitch down the center of the tape, you're catching every thread. And then I finish my edges again. Instead of binding, again, I don't have any cutting or any mess with that. I stitch the 5 8 on the back and on the front. And I have this wonderful... Chanel edge without all that, without all that mess. So it looks like a rag quilt, but it isn't really. We do a lot of fast and easy things. And, and you can take any, I showed you a couple of, of different panels that you can do the chenille on. This was simply a pillow top that I bought on Amazon and put the chenille on that print. And it turned this from a very simple, just ordinary pillow into something really special and finish my edges again with the chenille. So there, there's really no end to, to what you can do with the product. I love, I love sewing it on clothing. You can see the jacket that I have on. I've duplicated kind of a vintage chenille bedspread design. And again, the edges of my jacket are finished with the 5 8 inch chenille. So I don't have facings. I don't have hems. I've eliminated most of the construction of a jacket just by using chenille on it. I hope we've given you some ideas. That was amazing, Nanette. I love your product. And we had some really great comments coming in during your presentation of uh, some of your fans that are excited to see you again. So I hope you can stick around till the end so we can do the question and answer. I, we will be here. Okay, thank you so much. All right, guys, this is your last reminder to get in on the contest today. So if you have already done this, you don't need to do it again. But if you haven't yet, the secret phrase is live shows. Just simply type live shows in the comments.
And our last presenter today is actually one of our fan favorites, Stephanie from Feral Country Stitching. She's going to show some more fun stuff that you can do with your machine right at home without having any big equip fancy equipment. She's going to give us some more ideas for using her amazing templates and feet. So Stephanie, how are you? I'm good, Raylene. Thank you for having us. Oh, we're always happy to have you back. I mean, we all learn something every time you're on, so I'm always anxious for your appearance. So I'm just going to turn it over to you so you can get started. Okay, thank you. Um, before I get forget, this is our coupon code, so it's going to give you actually 20% off site-wide, so you can use this um, right now through tomorrow evening at midnight. You can use this on our website, um, and I've got a brand new product to show you. So um, what, what I've been doing is I actually created these last week. So these really cute little dinosaur templates. And, you know, what little kid doesn't love dinosaurs? Um, so these are going to come with, they, they work like all of our other templates, but these have another option of use for them too. So if you look behind me, I've got this cute little quilt. And these fall into a category we're calling traceables. So you actually use the insert. So you're using the little insert from the template to trace the applique, and then you cut it out and, and um, fuse it to your quilt or placemat or whatever you're making. And then you're going to use your outside of your template then to stitch around the inside with your quilting foot and that appliques it down and also quilts at the same exact time. So I'm going to kind of show you how that is. And I've got a couple samples that I've actually I stitched this one the, while, I've, while everybody was doing their demo. So I stitched this one out and this one is partially done. I just have to do the little bear yet, um, but I'm going to show you how this works. So we're just going to take um, this little dinosaur and I've got to find a pen pencil, something that writes. And all you're going to do is just quick and trace this little guy. I've just got fusible web on here. I use heat and bomb light. But you can use whatever you like. Makes no difference. And you're just going to trace him. And placemats are always fast and easy. And what little kid doesn't like a placemat? So now I've traced that little dinosaur out. And I can trim him, and we'll just quick and cut him out, just like we did the other little shapes down on those uh, placemats from earlier. So, like the little bears and the the Christmas, the little Christmas trees or pine trees, whatever, and then put them on um, as placemats. So if you live in a log home, or you know, in the woods, or you're a hunter, or you know somebody's a hunter. Um, these would make perfect, you could use them as a table uh, runner, you could do them as a quilt blocks, whatever, but this is getting your quilting done and your applique done all in one foul swoop, which is kind of fun. And it's pretty darn simple. Um, and for those who don't have a long arm, I mean, that's most of us. Um, so you know, quilting and we want to do as much as we can and at a time. So if you can quilt and applique all at once, well, you can't get much better than that. Okay. Orange is my favorite color, so I had to have an orange dinosaur. And I'll give this to my granddaughter. And she'll think it's great. She was a dinosaur for Halloween this year. Okay, so any of these tools, now we make them in four different sizes or three different sizes and then a long arm version as well. Um, now the dinosaurs so far we only have in the one size, but you can find them on our website. If you go to the shop um, tab at the top of the screen on our, on our website, there is a new little there's a drop down thing that comes down and you can just hit traceables and it'll bring up all the templates that can be used as 
traceable, so where you can get the applique shape as well. Now I'm going to just peel this off. There we go. Now I always tell everybody, don't do this because, you know, I break all the rules. I never follow what I, my own rules. So we're just going to stick this little guy kind of off to the left here. And we're just going to stick them on. Now, normally, I don't have my set of tools out. Or maybe I don't even have a set. I don't really know. But normally you would want to put grip dots on the back of your templates. Um, so if you have um, grip dots, so normally when you get your templates, they'll be blue like this. But you'll want to peel them if you can. Just kind of. My hubby normally does all these things for me, but apparently I was misbehaved wife today. He didn't get this all ready for me. It's probably because it's hard to peel. Was that why you didn't do it? I was working on the bears and the trees and the duckies. Well, we're not going to spend all this time peeling this. We'll just pretend this is clear. I'm pretending. Okay, good. All right, so now all you're going to do is place this on top of here, and I'm going to slide it under my ruler foot. So I have a ruler foot on my machine now, and I'm just going to... It's our mini foot, correct? Yep, it's our mini foot, and we're going to sit it right down along the edge of the dinosaur, any old place, it doesn't matter, and I'll needle down and needle up and raise the foot, and then I can pull the bobbin thread up to the top. Um, all this does is prevent me from getting uh, a kind of a nest underneath. And now all we're going to do is do a little back stitch here. And that's just going to kind of knot that. And then I can cut off these, these long tails. So they're out of my way. And then all I'm going to do is stitch, moving my fabric and my template together. So I'm just going to swing all the way around. inside here goodness for needle threaders. Isn't, aren't they great? I know I'd be lost without mine. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to start right where my thread broke there. And I can come back and trim those threads up when I'm done. dinosaur and he's stitched down and if you want your dinosaur and you don't like the raw edge some people don't mind it they want to um, 
they just let it fray some people like it closer and if you're one that likes it closer you can certainly take your scissor and you can just you know fold back the the edge and you can trim it down closer if you like or you can you know you can leave it oops let me turn this right off the back here i'm stuck to the machine or you can um trim it down um close to the to the stitch line there but Oh, look, I left some sticky under his head. But then I can also use the um, same dinosaur and I can come over here and I can stitch, you know, the dinosaur out. So he can be a, just the dinosaur itself and use him as quilting, as the quilting design. So look, on the back of this guy here, you can see, because I have all three of my layers together, you can see where I stitched all three of them. So I have the trees stitched, I have the deer stitched, and that's plenty of quilting. So when I'm done, I'll just trim this down to exactly the size I want for my placemat, put some binding on it, ready to go. And because I've already done all the shapes on this one, except for I haven't stitched around the baby bear, I can just pull out my little baby bear lay it on top and again I can stitch right on top of this guy and stitch around the edge and so and there's a bunch of different templates so you can see them in the in that on that page on line under that traceable so there's different sizes so we make you know, the different sizes, but um, like we have, like the trees, for instance. So this is the largest size we make, and these will fit the half inch ruler feet. So even if it's a different brand of ruler foot than ours, that'll fit in here. And these will, you know, the foot fits in here and you, you sew in the path. But because of this being open the way it is, we can also use it as a traceable. So we're able to trace the tree shapes and use them to applique on the shape as well as to quilt them on. And then we make this in all three sizes. So we make it in this size, we make it in an XL, which is kind of our medium size. And then we make it in a me medium size. And then we also have um, the same in all, all of them, like so, like the deer, so on and so forth. Now we do the Path Easy templates, which I've shown previous weeks, um, like the expansion set and so on and so forth. Um, but any of these ones like this, any of them that have the open space like this, you can use any of these as traceables. So just depending on what size you're looking at, and these make super fast quilts. So if you're needing something in a hurry, you know, or you're not necessarily, you're more of a crafter, not really a quilter per se, um, applique might be more your friend than necessarily picking up and putting a bunch of pieces together to make a bunch of blocks. So taking something like, and making something like this may be more, more, more your speed um, and super easy to do. And like I said, you can just take those dinosaur shapes, not just make the applique, but you could just put dinosaurs in here. Does he put in some uh, dinosaur footprints? There's a digital pattern on the website um, for this um quilt and all the little dinosaur footprints are in there so you can just put them on stitch around them and then you end up with little dinosaur feet um on your quilt as well so it's just sky's the limit really it's just where will your imagination take you and um i know that dusty's antsy for me to do um barnyard he wants me to do a barnyard series you know uh, that's one of the first things we teach our kids to do, you know, to make all those barnyard sounds. So can we vote uh, for that? Can I vote with Desi? I want the barnyard too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Desi wants those too. So, I wish Desi. <laughs> yeah, so those are coming soon, uh, probably within the next couple of weeks, because I think they'll be very popular as well. So, and I we're agree. always teaching classes. So you can always hop on to our website and sign up for our class list. The classes are free. Um, and I teach at least two days, if not three days a week. Um, so anybody's welcome. 
And I guess that's that was that. awesome. Like I said, you never disappoint. And, you know, I will say for the viewers, you know, a few weeks ago, I ordered your foot and the templates. And I haven't been able to do anything with them yet. But guys, the follow up customer service when you order these is amazing because right away I got some uh, emails with uh, how I could access videos. So it's a great company to do business with. Of course, we wouldn't have them here if they weren't because they're part of our family here. So, but uh, remember that she is giving you that 20% discount. Her code is across the bottom of the screen now. But as a reminder, everybody that was on today, just go to the Quilt Craft Soul Mall, click on Wild Wednesday, all four vendors are right there. So now Ron's gonna bring everybody back in so we can quickly go through our question and answer period. And uh, while he's getting everybody back here like the Brady Bunch, um, there was a question earlier that I happened to catch before it rolled back, and that was for Barbara. Uh, Barbara, do you sell the light? I do. What well, answer? <laughs> Okay. I should have mentioned. Awesome. <laughs> so yes, Barbara does have those lights that because uh, we were able to see the light really well on the camera. Yeah, so that was it. awesome. And uh, and Nanette, uh, let's see, Roberta wants to know if you sell the past foxes. Nanette, can you hear us? Yes, we have a question. Yes. yes, it's there. For Nanette. Not a lot of static, but I, I can hear you. Uh, the question is, was, can you choose past you boxes? She's okay, it looks like we're having a little bit of a technical problem with Nanette, so we will get that yes, answer you for you. Our, yes. I, yeah, her answer was yes on that, on the Chanel boxes. Yeah, we're getting a lot of feedback and, and interference here. Uh, next question, though, we are going to go, let's see here. Uh, Mary would like to know, do you sell the felt separately? And uh, that's for Barbara as well. Oh, hi, Mary. Yes, I do. I sell it um, in the yardage, quarter yards, half yards, and it comes to you felted. I do all the felting. So awesome. it's, it's a, a lot easier for me to do. Okay, let's see here. Um, oh, for uh, Julie from uh, Bond Interiors. Um, someone's asking about the prices of necklaces. Oh, the necklaces, the five bead necklaces are $125. We have three bead necklaces that are $75. And then our earrings are $40. And our bracelets are $40 to $50. So awesome. 15%. Okay, uh, another question looks like this one is for Stephanie. Um, do you have a starter set with the foot? And uh, hang on, <laughs> a starter set with the foot and will the foot fit any machine? Which I kind of know the answer to that, but I'm gonna let you take that. <laughs> um, we, do, we do have a starter set with the foot and um, it's on the website. And the we do have feet that will fit every machine. Um, when you go on, all you need to put in, it, it will ask you what kind of machine you have. And the re, that lets us double check what you choose, whether you choose sh high, medium, or low um, shank, so that way we make sure you're getting the right foot for your machine. Um, Great. And we do them for awesome. Bernina as well. So we have them for everything. And actually, um, this is just a general question. Betsy asked, she said she missed the first uh, part of the show. And just a reminder, everybody, in about probably a couple of hours after the show is over, they will be loaded up on our YouTube channel, Quilt Craft Sew Mall. And you'll be able to go back if you did miss the beginning of the show today. And you want to do that because if you missed the first sender, you missed her beautiful jewelry. And I know you want to see that because, come on, Mother's Day is right around the corner. So <laughs> it's a perfect opportunity. So, okay, let's see what else we've got today. Did that... I think that just about took care of all the questions. I apologize if anybody typed one earlier and I missed it. Um, but if you go ahead and type them in now, if you didn't get your question answered, the vendors are usually pretty good about going back and scrolling through to make sure that all the questions got answered. And I try to do that myself tomorrow if I get a chance as well. So, so okay, well, I think we're just about done. We want to thank all four of our wonderful presenters today. This was a really fun and very informative show. And uh, just a reminder, everybody, again, I know I'm a broken record, but if you go to Quilt Craft Soul Mall, click.
click on Wild Wednesday, that's going to take you to the vendors that we're on today. And once you're finished shopping with them, then you want to click on weekly specials because our mall vendors are offering fabulous specials. They change every Friday. And you want to take advantage of those as well. And when you're done there, then just stroll through the rest of the mall. You know, I always say, what other mall do you go to that you don't have to worry about parking? You know, you're not looking for the restroom. It's all right there. It's right here. So um, we're glad to have you guys. We're glad for your continued support. We're so excited. We can't wait to see those of you that are going to be in Boise. We've got a terrific show next week already lined up. So we hope we see you all back. And in the meantime, go out and make the rest of the week a creative one. Bye-bye now.